Now this brings us to the catacombs under Rome. And the catacombs are places primarily for burial within the city of Rome. We also see some areas of worship in the catacomb, but mostly it's places for burial, as we'll see. Now, a lot of early Christian art is found in catacombs, which are cut out of the volcanic rock under the city of Rome itself. Now, according to Roman law, people must be buried outside the city on private land. The problem is that's incredibly expensive. So the Christians, usually being the poor, frequently will cut under the city to do the same thing. And what we're looking at is the Good Shepherd, the story of Jonah, and the Orants. And we can see the cutouts in the rock where they're adding bodies. And usually these are skeletal remains that are being uh, laid up in the catacombs. So this is a key scene from the story of Jonah and the whale. And it prefigures Christ. In other words, it sets things up for Christ. On the outside, we have four images, and those four images are from the life of Jonah. Jonah basically doubts God is swallowed by a sea serpent and then uh, refines his faith. So this is really a story that's going to speak to people who have a lot of doubts because to them, this is a new faith. Surrounding uh, or between them, we see these figures with their hands raised. These are known as orants. An orant, O-R-A-N-T-S, uh, an orant is a figure giving this gesture that tells us this is something worshipful. This is something extraordinary that we're seeing. This is a miracle. This is not something that's terrestrial. It was also the form of prayer in the early church, one would raise their palms up towards their sides with their arms raised, not the clasped hands that we're used to. But if we move into the center, what you'll notice is a series of sheep and a man with a lamb on his back. That is Jesus, again as the good shepherd. And here he's youthful, he's clean-shaven, and he looks Italian. Why has he suddenly changed? Because he's being depicted by Italians. So they're going to depict him the way that they would see him, which is probably like themselves. And the style at the time is not to wear a beard, so he's clean-shaven. He has the close-cropped hair that we would expect of Roman fashion. And this is that non-standard Jesus again. Many of those ideas that we associate with them are not there. And you'll notice he's dressed in white, white as a symbol of innocence and humility more than anything else. So we're going to continue as we move through this chapter in the next few chapters to see this evolution of the image of Jesus from the Middle Eastern man that he probably would have been to the image that we are used to today of the Western European Jesus.